The French dinner service. A ah, few culinary experiences are as elegantly presented and as enthusiastically enjoyed as an exquisite French banquet setting. It's the ultimate gastronomic moment, with classic dishes cooked tableside by a master chef flown in for the occasion, fine and flowing Bordeaux wine, and beautiful crystal glassware. Luxuries we have a chance to enjoy today, but only a century ago, were exclusive to aristocrats and royalty. In this episode, we're in France to trace the origins of these celebrated luxuries with a visit to the Paris Maison of the world's preeminent crystal glass manufacturer. Then south to Bordeaux, where some of the most iconic wines are made. Plus, a masterclass on enjoying the rare clarets of Margot, and our list of recommended French luxuries you can enjoy without ever leaving home. So join us, I'm David Zaldran in Paris, and this is Executive Class. When it comes to luxury, all roads lead to France. The French royals and aristocrats were insatiable consumers of luxury. Naturally, Europe's most talented artisans and craftsmen flocked to the country. The revolution did little to dampen the appetite for excess. Indeed, the bourgeoisie and Bonaparte families that followed wouldn't settle for anything less. From this tradition came the French art of living. Art de vivre and savoir faire, the French way of doing things. After covering the global luxury scene for more than 10 years, we realized that certain terms just keep cropping up. Two of these are art de vivre and savoir faire. Obviously, these are French terms, and you can always Google it if you want to know more about these terms. Otherwise, you can visit a French maison, one that represents that spirit. And that's what brings us to Paris. and to the Galerie Musée Baccarat in particular. The former mansion of aristocrats reopened its doors in 2003 as the museum and showroom of Baccarat, the legendary French crystal works brand founded in the town of Baccarat in the 1760s. The grand townhouse is in itself a historic landmark, but it's for the magnificent crystal creations within that draws collectors and customers of the brand from all over the world. So here we are at the Maison Baccarat in the 16th arrondissement of Paris. The Maison has a boutique, it has a restaurant, it also has a museum. So you could call it a complete lifestyle experience, the Baccarat lifestyle. And this is the opening act. It's a beautiful illuminated sculpture called Medici's XXL. Let's take a closer look. The neo-rococo interiors of the museum is a work of designer Philippe Stark, with elegant yet playful touches provided by these monumental modern Baccarat pieces. So I'm here to get the grand tour from Michaela Lerch. She is the director of the Heritage Department of Baccarat. She's also the museum curator. Hello, bonjour. Hello, nice to meet you and welcome in Baccarat Mansion in Paris. Thank you so much. This is a beautiful mansion, and a beautiful room. Tell me about this place. Oh, that is a unique place, uh, part and parcel of uh, the French culture. Uh, it has been uh, very well known before it became Baccarat House. It has been well known as uh, the mansion of Marie-Laure de Noailles, mm. who is uh, <coughs> the name of uh, a very, very famous uh, aristocratic French family. Though the rest of the mansion was redesigned by Stark to look contemporary, this salon with its set of Baccarat chandeliers remains pretty much the same as when the Vicomtesse de Noailles once entertained artist friends like Jean Cocteau, Yves Saint Laurent, and Salvador Dali. 
they threw stunning parties here uh, and uh, the link between Baccarat and uh, the former house of Marie-Laure de Noailles is in fact the link between the artists because uh, as you may know Salvador Dali also did nice stunning creations for Baccarat so we are continuing to tell our own story here in these mansion since 2003 Artists, architects and designers still come to find inspiration in the iconic Baccarat crystal pieces exhibited here. Some of which you might recognize because, yes, these famous designs were created by Baccarat and continue to be seen on tables everywhere. Show me some of the iconic pieces uh, in the 250 years of so Baccarat. One of uh, the most that famous is familiar, yes. glass mm. sets of Baccarat is uh, that piece, that glass, who is called Akur, has been uh, created in 1841, mm -hmm. uh, is very, very uh, well known, became an icon because it has been uh, set on all the famous tables uh, of uh, the crowned heads all over the world, even of the Vatican or, or even Napoleon III. Used was it, it, was it a water goblet? Table. It looks very contemporary until today. Completely contemporary, and in fact, timeless modernity. That would I say uh, as characteristic for for uh, this shape. In a way, the success story of the world's most prestigious crystal works brand began with a drinking glass. Inspired by an exhibit of Baccarat crystal in 1832. French king Louis XVIII commissioned a set of glasses for the tables of the Tuileries Palace for all visiting royals and nobles to see and envy. From here on, Baccarat crystal was a standard to aspire for and a choice of crystal of future emperors and kings. The prototype of the famous aqua goblet used by royals and heads of state everywhere was created in 1840 and first grazed the table of French King Louis-Philippe. Even then, a Baccarat glass was more than just an indication of class. It was a work of art, with stunning transparency and brilliance that brought wonder and illumination to any table or room. At the Paris World's Fair in the mid-19th century, a pair of red crystal vases would catapult Baccarat to global fame and cement the French company's reputation for unparalleled artistry. The prize-winning Simon vases bear the unmistakable hallmarks of the Baccarat artisan's skill, with detailed engravings on red crystal, a unique Baccarat formulation using 24-karat gold in the crystal infusion. And if you were a foreigner arriving in Paris in 1867, you'd be totally blown away by this. Yeah, because of the, the perfection and the, the idea of uh, refinishment and uh, passion for the details. Have a look on there, here you will find a lobster and frogs and spider and all these uh, details show that it's just the idea of passion and uh, perfection of, uh, of uh, details. Just to show off the, the level of craftsmanship of, of Baccarat, That I is suppose. high quality, uh, yeah. the highest. Nicholas II, the Tsar of Russia, was one of those who was also smitten. He commissioned what was to become another Baccarat icon, the Tsar set, glass collection. You can still, uh, it's still available in, in our shops. That is the so-called uh, Tsar set because it has been uh, ordered, uh, commissioned specially for Tsar Nicola II mm -hmm. in uh, 1906, mm -hmm. uh, e exclusively for him in the Baccarat gold-red color and special order for him 
the vodka shot. Okay, well, he's Russian after all. Yes, <laughs> and do you have to know that the red color, the most precious color, because there is 24 gold carat inside oh, since today, okay. that was only for the Tsar. A similar set is available to anyone else who can afford it today. It's testament to the timeless design and untarnished quality of Baccarat crystal. Indeed, many of the current creations found in the Maison are inspired by archival pieces in the museum collection. The splendid Zenith chandelier first launched in 1840 is another of Baccarat's iconic creations that has withstood the test of time and fashion. This 1.1 million US dollar version is fitted with 700 blue topaz precious stones, but almost everything else about the design apart from the candles, is faithful to the zenith's original spirit. This is wow. a very, very unique piece, exemplary collaboration uh, with that uh, famous uh, house, uh, Ostro, uh, famous for the blue topaz, topaz. Uh, stones. Wow. And uh, you, you may uh, uh, find between uh, the um, crystal pendants, the very classical uh, pendants of Baccarat are these octagon pendants. Yeah. And uh, between uh, the octagons, you will find just one red, one red pearl. When did that, that start? Yeah. is the signature of Baccarat crystal chandeliers since 1997. The chandelier occupies a special place in the Baccarat catalogue, and whether it's the monumental chandelier that hovers over the entrance of the museum, or Dutch designer Marcel van der spherical Leroy Soleil hanging sculpture, or Philippe Stark's chic black crystal number, the zenith continues to inspire new variations in different sizes, shapes, and color. What makes the Baccarat crystal special? The Baccarat crystal is uh, the idea and the symbol of reflection of light. Which is what it's doing right now. Which is like, a, this is a very nice uh, example. On a, a grey day like Even this one on in Paris. Even on grey days, it lightens, it lightens your daily life, your home. Baccarat crystal is uh, reflecting light more than it is cut more it's uh, faceted, more it reflects light. That is the idea of Baccarat crystal, the reflection of light. I've always loved the way crystal adds that extra touch of elegance, lightness, and fairy tale magic to any table, writing desk, or corner of a room. At the Maison Baccarat's restaurant, the aptly named Crystal Room, the tasteful use of crystal to decorate and illuminate the interiors adds brilliance to your meal. The impeccable creations of two Michelin star chef Guy Martin's team and the sommelier's French wine selection are an accurate reflection of French savoir-faire and art de vivre. As are the Baccarat crystal chandeliers, candelabras and glassware in the dining room, which all together create the restaurant's dazzling atmosphere. Up next, our search for the best examples of French savoir-faire continues in southwestern France with a visit to the historic center of Bordeaux and the celebrated vineyards of saint emilion and Margaux. All that and more when executive class returns after the break.